In the world of seabirds, no one stands out like the tufted puffin, with big colorful beaks, white faces, and their namesake tufts. They've earned the nickname the parrots of the sea, although their delightful waddle makes us think more of a tipsy mater d. I think generally people consider the puffins the clowns. Um, when the birds are in the water splashing around, that gets the biggest laugh because they're very enthusiastic splashing, sometimes their feet are in the air. Um, but I think also because of the nice uh, yellow tufts, um, they also seem a little bit comical to people and they think they're quite cute. Most people only get to see puffins in captivity because the birds spend most of their lives at sea. and only come near the coast during the summer to nest. But there is one spot in the lower 48 where you can see puffins from the shore, Haystack Rock in Cannon Beach. Come on over, we've got these scopes fixed on the puffins. They're nesting up on Haystack Rock. Tiffany Booth is a board member with the nonprofit group Friends of Haystack Rock. Every July, they set up scopes for what they call puffin watch. So if you just look through there and down to the bottom, oh, yeah, you see them? They're the, the black guys with the orange so beaks. Many. They're awesome. Most of the people don't know that Tufton Puffins um, are on the Oregon coast. They're adorable. So to be down at Haystack Rock and set up with scopes and allow people to look at them up close in their burrows and their interactions is, is really fun to see the people's excitement about it. Oh, there they are. I see them. Yay! I think it's really cool how they're all centered into one rock. It's like a big puffin village. But the annual Puffin Watch isn't just about sharing the joy of puffins. It's also about sharing the fact that the birds are in danger. Their population has plummeted. There have been highly publicized die-offs in Alaska, and their colonies are disappearing along the West Coast. Washington listed them as endangered, and puffin watchers fear Oregon could be next. No one is following the plight of the puffins on Haystack Rock like Tim Halloran. From their arrival in the spring to nest, until the last little puffling flies out to sea at the end of summer, he's here with his scope, keeping a detailed record of their activities. Okay, it looks like there's a couple of them up there. So I will write down the time and the location and a little bit about them. For nine years, Tim has worked as a volunteer for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to monitor these puffins. We've got a population of about 130 here that's been pretty stable for 10 years. Oh, that's good. Now, 60 years ago, there would have been 800 just wow. here on the rock wow. and thousands more up and down the coast. No really? kidding. So their population is down. So where are you guys from? Tim also doubles as an avian ambassador to all the birders who come from around the world to see these puffins. So we're looking for uh, tufted puffins up there. Yeah, well, we've got them. Cool. cool. However, conditions are such. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a puffin carrying food. Not carrying food, carrying nesting material. And landing. They have this really amazing breeding plumage and they're really uniquely beautiful type of bird. And this is also one of the only places yep. in the state where you can <laughs> see them without them being a flyby yeah. way out at sea. Yeah. So, so they're really a unique and local bird in this place, so that's why we would come all the way up here to see them. Which is also why Tim and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are keeping a tight eye on the puffin population. No one wants to think of Haystack Rock without them. Monitoring Haystack Rock is just part of Fish and Wildlife's research. They also periodically survey the few offshore islands where puffins nest. So let's go up to Middle Rock and do a count, and then we'll come back and do a count at Finley Rock. Sean Stevenson oversees the agency's puffin research in Oregon, and he relies heavily on volunteers like Tim, Tiffany, and the other folks he's brought along for today's survey. 1988. A uh, burrow nesting survey was done along the entire Oregon coast. They estimated approximately 5,000 tufted puffins. And then in 2008, I conducted a survey and we documented several hundred puffins along the entire Oregon coast. 
and that threw up a red flag. And what had been the biggest colony, here on Three Arch Rocks, fell from almost 3,000 puffins to less than 100. So the stakes are high today to see if they've returned. There seems to be more birds on land this time around than last time. Granted, I've only counted three, but I just started, so. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. This side of the rock is good nesting habitat for murres and cormorants, but not so much for the puffins. Uh, there's just not enough soil. They like to burrow into the soil, and the soil depth is probably minimal along here, as well as it will be on the other side. It's this unique geology and the incredible seabird colonies it supports that earned Three Arch Rocks the first National Wildlife Refuge designation west of the Mississippi. To protect the birds, the area is off limits to the public during nesting season. But that doesn't stop other types of seafarers from visiting. Well, there's a whale right in between the rocks. Oh, hey, in yeah. between the islands. Is that a gray, probably? Yeah, a gray whale. No one knows for sure why the number of puffins returning to nest on islands like these is falling. Some scientists think warming ocean temperatures caused by climate change are disrupting the food web and, in effect, starving the birds. They also blame things like oil spills and human disturbances near breeding sites. But it's hard to draw firm conclusions when we know so little about the lives of puffins out on the open ocean. Since these guys hunt further offshore, should I, is it typical for me not to be seeing them on the water? They could be, and they, and they may not be on the water. And they could be further offshore, definitely finding food for their chicks. This is where puffin lovers like Tiffany and the Friends of Haystack Rock come in. They're raising money to fund research to place transmitters on the birds. So we can follow their movements, track where they're going during the breeding season as well as during the winter. That research is still in development. For now, the volunteers are focused on today's survey. How many did you have? I had zero on the water. What about you, Brent? I had 17 in the sky. And I had nine in the land in front of their burrows. The numbers are larger than I expected. Sounds like we've got several hundred so far, so that's a good sign. Our count completed, Sean offers to take us out to the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. It might be known as Terrible Tilly, but at the moment, it just seems terribly crowded with stellar sea lions who take an incredible interest in us. Like an aquatic twist on the hand slap game, they come up to our boat to slap the hole and dart away. The hope is that one day, the puffins on Haystack Rock and Three Arch Rocks will again be as plentiful as these sea lions on Tillamook Rock. But as Sean sees it, it really is going to take a village. Scientists and everyday puffin lovers working together. <laughs>